All right. Now, we've been looking at fractions, and you've got a test that's coming up about fractions. And that test I'd like to give to you all tomorrow. But before the test, I, I want to try something with you. We call this muddiest point. Now, you have logged on to your email accounts, and you have clicked on the link, hopefully, and we're able to get to today's meet. There's a message that's waiting for you when you get there. It says, what is one thing that you want me to clear up for you? And when you get here, OK, I made a mistake. The newest messages are up at the top. The first message is down at the bottom. So the first message is, when you get here, I want you to think of something. We have been studying with fractions that call something that you're just not very sure of. What is that one thing you want me to clear up for you? And what I'd like for you to do is you can come up with any nickname you want to for yourself, and I want you to type in your message about what's the one thing about fractions that you would love for me to clear up. What's the muddiest point for you when it comes to fractions? So don't raise your hand to tell me. I want you to type it in there. That way kids who are too nervous or shy to say something out loud, they can just type it in there, and um, they'll get their voice heard too. So take a moment to type in what is the muddiest point for you when it comes to fractions. Now the test that you'll be taking will concentrate primarily with dividing fractions. There will be some items on there where you're going to have to uh, look for com uh, combinations, some permutations. There'll be some things on there where you'll have to do other operations with fractions. Primarily it's going to be divide fractions. So, what is the muddiest point for you when it comes to our study of fractions? All right, somebody says nothing. I got somebody saying multiply. Okay, so this kid who says nothing and they put their name on it, I'm going to ask them a few questions and see if they really do have nothing, uh, no concerns about the fractions. I got multiply so far. I'm going to leave this up for a few more minutes. Let somebody have a shot at adding a muddy point for them. See how many we can get, and then we'll try to work some of those problems out that people have. We'll try to do that up here on the Mondo board. Okay. Uh, I got somebody that says, You're the best. Who in the world would bless that child's heart? But I want you to think about what are some problems that you have with fractions. Not so much what you know your thoughts are about people in the classroom or other people. Now you only got about ten more seconds. I'm on this, so hurry it up. Those of you who are still typing away, and if you don't have a device that's logged in or working, see if you can't get somebody who's is there to to put that up there for you. You got a few more. Seconds. All right, I see multiply again. I see simplify. Wait for a couple more. All right. Top it in, sent to me. Top it in. You can put it in there, whatever causes you problems. Top it in that little box and send it on. All right, my concern is when you have to choose between multiplication or division during word problems. So that is a good one. That's something that we'll have to clear up for some people. Okay, looks like old Cuz sent me that one. Division. Okay, we got simplify again. Okay. All right, so we have, we have quite a few that people have put up there. Uh, Somebody says, I'm the best. That poor child, bless his heart. He keeps saying all these nice things. Permutations and combinations, simplify. Okay, it looks to me, nothing I need. Nothing I need. All right, Burns, I'll put you to the test and see. Okay, permutations. All right, so we've got a lot of things up there. Let's talk about how you can figure out whether you need to multiply or divide when you're doing uh, word problems or story problems. One of the things that you want to look for is that right there. 
the preposition of, if you see the preposition of, most of the time they want you to multiply. I mean, they could finagle around and word the problem in such a way that they might want you to do something else. But if they have of in there, of means multiply. So when it comes to fractions, so I would, I would see of, I would very carefully read to make sure that they don't put any more data in their information. But if they have of, you want to multiply. Now, if they talk about something way or another of like how many groups, if they give you like how many groups and they might have different wording for that, if they do, then they want you to divide. You know, they, if, they, if the question asks you in such a way that you have to figure out how many groups you can get out of something else, that's division. That's division. So that's one thing I would say about a key word for multiplying and a key word for dividing. Now, I see converting whole numbers into a mixed number. Uh, that will play along with what, what we'll do then. Okay. If I had a story problem and it said the word of in that story problem, I'm going to assume it wants to multiply. So let's say that we've got a whole number here, and we're going to multiply that by, we'll put a mixed number. Let's say we've got three and a half. So we have four times three and a half. Well, I'm going to estimate my answer first. I know if I get three times four or four times three, that's going to give me 12. So this is going to be a little bit more than, than 12. The first thing I want to do to make this an improper fraction, now we don't make a whole number a mixed number. We make it an improper fraction. To be a mixed number, you'd have a whole number plus a fraction part. But here, we're going to make it an improper fraction. We'd have 4 over 1. Our numerator is larger than our denominator. So it's a, an improper fraction. Now, 3 and a half, my denominator times my whole number plus my numerator gives me, Jerry, my new numerator, which in this case is 7. My denominator stays 2. Now, there's different ways to simplify. There's the cross-cancel that a lot of you kids have told me you learned from Miss Mason last year. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. With 2 and 4, my greatest common factor is, uh, Andrea, 2. I can get one group of 2 out of 2. I can get two groups of 2 out of 4. And then I just multiply from left to right. 2 times 7 is 14, and 1 times 1 is 1. Now I can take that 14 over 1 and make it just 14. So 4 times 3 and a half is 14. Now I estimated my answer would be about 12, a little bit more, and that's very close. So I have the right answer there. Now <clears throat> I'm going to do a division problem. Let's say that we've got a situation where uh, somebody has we'll say 10 and a half watermelons. And they, can, they are going to want some groups out of that 10 and a half watermelons. Maybe they're making a, a, a fruit basket or maybe they're cutting up the free fruit in the cafeteria and they got little baggies. Let's say that each of those baggies contains about, we'll say, uh, let's say we want to be able to get about, I'm just going to come up with a fraction. I'm just going to say that we want to be able to get three, we want to divide that by three-fourths. We'll divide that by three-fourths. So I can take this ten and a half, this mixed number, and make it into an improper fraction, Johnny. Ten times uh, two, or two times ten, Johnny, is what? 20 plus 1 is, all right, 21, and my denominator 2 stays the same. Now, Miss Mason taught you all last year that you, I left it, except for I made it into an improper fraction. It's the same value, but we leave it, we change it, and then we flip it. So I'm going to change that in division to multiply. We'll flip this 3 fourths to 4 over 3. Can I do any cross simplifying here? Cross cancel. Yeah. Okay. I have 3 and I have 21. What's the greatest common factor of 3 and 21? All right. Little uh, Merle. 
three. And I can get one group of three out of three. I can get seven groups of three out of 21. I have two and four. What's the greatest common factor of two and four, Balin? Two. two. So I can get one group of two out of two. Oops. And I can get two groups of two out of four. Now, seven times two gives us what? Fourteen. And one times one is one. Fourteen over one gives us fourteen. So fourteen must be our lucky number today. We've gotten fourteen both times. Okay, so that, I hope, has cleared up some of your muddy points. Um, we'll talk some more about permutations. A lot of kids had trouble with that. Uh, I see some more questions up there. Uh, are there examples that help people with their concerns? Uh, these are examples, I feel like. I mean, somebody had a concern about keywords. How can you tell when a story problem is about division or multiplying? I showed you a couple. Somebody had a problem with multiplying. I'd worked out a problem with you. Somebody had a problem with uh, turning whole numbers into improper fractions. We did that. I feel like we hit a lot of the muddy points. I feel like we'll be okay. I will need to talk a bit more about the permutations, though, for some groups. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, figure, we'll figure this out.